My name is Fatima and I'm talking to you from Newfoundland, Canada. Um, normally I start talking about what happened to me between the last episode and today, but I will leave that for the end to this time. And I will start directly with the knitting part. Um, so I only have one finished object and I still have to weave in the ends. That is this pair of socks. Um, it is from, I have all this leftover from the skein. It is the same skein, just a different color. It's the Pat and Croy socks. And I really like the, this color combination. And it fits just perfectly. And I thought it was nice because you, um, it looks small, but it's not. Uh, I could put it on a <laughs> sock blocker, but anyway. So they are not the same as you can see. But I really like them. I think they are perfect. Uh, so much that I'm using them as template for the other one. So this is my only finished object and I finished it in, um, in December. And then I started this other uh, pair of socks. But um, so it's okay. It's exactly the same as this in the beginning. Um, this, this has a different, uh, feel to it, but I thought that, like, I, I always do like this. I need the two socks at the same time, but in two separate needles. So I'm always at the same point when I finish one, the other is close to be finished too. But I thought that, uh, I think this is too, too simple I didn't like the pattern that much so I'm thinking that maybe I'll do a color work on the top and with this yarn and I think it's gonna look good because it has a little bit of brown I don't know so I haven't decided yet on the socks while I don't decide it just stays as it is but this is the finished project then I had a lot of uh, projects uh, ongoing, I still have, and those that take a lot of time to do, like I have two Stephen West shawls, the M cow that I didn't finish, I have just the last uh, clue to make, but I didn't feel like working on them. Um, so I worked on some other stuff. And initially I was thinking I would start any new project in December, and then I'll just finish my projects. It didn't happen. Um, life happens and I needed some comfort and I cast on new projects. So last year from this book, uh, Pop Knitting, I, I did a sample of the first pattern they have. And I, I was amazed how stretchy this is. And I really like this sample. So, I decided to start uh, a blanket because I have a lot of this thick yarn that I did. And it is amazingly flexible. So I'm doing a, a throw. I'm hoping it's wide enough, but I think it will be because now it's in the, the needles and the, these needles are not too wide. But as you can see, it's pretty, it's close together. So I think it's going to be a good size for uh, a, a sofa throw, something that you can put on when it's cold. But I started this last year and I stopped. <laughs> but this is one project that I, I'm, I'm really glad with. And this is... This is very easy to make. The only thing you make is you start with your second collar in knit. So you knit with the second collar. Then you purl with the main collar. Then you purl with the second collar. And then you knit with the main collar. And the thing is, what you do is you're you are going to work um, from the same side twice. 
So you have on the needle, oh, let me see here. So I'm working with my blue collar that ended here and I am on a pearl collar. So, so I started doing a neat with the white and the white goes to the end. Then I start the row again. So if you see, the white is at the end of my project and the blue I started. So you do one row with the, the white, then you start again from the same side and you do it with the blue. Then you're gonna turn the work and go back with the white in pearl. And then you go back with the blue in neat. And that's how you achieve this interesting fabric. Very, very um, elastic. It's really nice. I like it very much. So I have to finish this and I want to, to work on this because I have a, a bunch of this yarn and that is what I have in my stash there. It's Corydale. And I want to, to use up so that I can organize this room a little bit better. Then the second project that I had was the Martin Story blanket. And, and the thing, I think I needed uh, maybe six more or seven blocks to finish the project. But I was talking to my sister Gray and she said, oh, but a blanket has to, who is this blanket for? Because one meter is too small. And, and then it was, you know what, I don't know who I'm going to give this blanket to. I'm considering my children or my sisters, but maybe my children, because I thought this would be something good for them to pass on and something to remember me. But, um, but then I decided to increase one row more on the side and on the bottom. And so now I still have to make, so I, and I start blocking them, but I didn't do a perfect job because one of the first ones, I think I blocked too much. So what I'm doing is I'm, I block them to be a, to be easier to, oh, and then there is this, to be easier to put them together but then I will block it again as a whole thing. And so now I need to do one more of this collar and then eight of the next block that I haven't started yet. So I'm, I'm now working on my last, last of this collar. And also by blocking this, and you can see the difference here on the blocked one, and the unblocked, it's, I was doing it very, very strong, <laughs> the blocking. But um, the thing is, this will allow me to see how big it is. And I was thinking maybe adding some, depending on how big it is, I might add some columns on the side or in the middle. I don't know yet. So I will see, and then I will block them. But I need to make um, nine more. So one of these and eight of the last color, and then I'll be ready to, to work. And I do have plenty of this clay color, and, and I have plenty of the dark gray color. So, so um, I think I'll, I can do something to make it a little bit bigger, to make it interesting for my sister. <laughs> Let me put it here. Okay, so I have a lot of uh, little bits of hand spun, and I thought about doing something to give in the winter to warm up children. And I saw a vest and I said, oh, vests are fast. 
and I can do, but I, I'm not sure I, I like the fabric. So then I stopped. But I don't know, I could uh, add some more. And, and then I just got a free pattern on drops. And, and I was thinking about doing that, but I'm not sure. So I stopped. It's, it's a month. Um, then I started working on my primrose again. And I'm not working steadily, but I have been working on it. So I had some progress. Last time I, I showed this, I was, wait, let me just, this is a Mary Wallen pattern and I bought the kit. And when you buy the kit, you, you get the pattern like this, but you also get it on, um, on through the as a, a PDF file. So that's good because it helps me following. So last time I was here. So this month I worked this much and it doesn't look like much, but the thing is I have to go, I think two more rows and it's time to start the separation on the, on the second row you start the separation for the, the sleeves. So, yeah. So it's going. I wanted to finish with the, at the end of February, but that's not going to happen. And I'm not pushing myself to anything. Then the last one is the Tinder. The Tinder is the pattern, if you saw my, my gift opening, I bought the, the Tinder pattern on the, um, my husband gave me the Tinder pattern that I wanted to make him a sweater. And the thing is that that pattern is in Norwegian, Norwegian only. So luckily for me, I, I did a Google translate, but I have a friend that lives in Norway. She's Portuguese, but she lives in Norway and she did a translation for me. So I did a sample for this yarn and this yarn is, uh, let me see here. It's homespun double knitting. And it, it, it's one of those, uh, purchases. I saw the, the tweed and my husband wanted a tweed. And I didn't pay attention on the fiber content. So the fiber content is 22% fine merino, 22% alpaca, and then it starts to go down. 23% polyamide and 23% acrylic, 10% viscose. So not my favorite uh, yarn, but he likes it and that's it. So I did a sample. I washed the sample. I didn't put any anything on this on to block it. I did as I'm going to do the sweaters because what I do with the sweaters, if I block them and I don't block all my sweaters, I I just wash them and I put them to dry flat on a towel. So that's what I did. And I didn't see any difference on the, the sample before or after. Um, and my sample was giving me 22 stitches instead of the 20 requests on, on the par pattern, 20 stitches per 10 centimeters and, or four inches. And then I started, but it was so big, so big. Cause I calculate, like I increase the numbers to, to match those 20 stitches. And it was so big that I decided to stop. And I started again, so it was already like this. And I started a new one. And this is where I am now. And I really like the pattern. It's, it's really nice. So in the beginning, she has some uh, increases and she makes a very, um, a much deeper, um, she makes many short rows in the back. And because I was not following the pattern, understanding the pattern well, 
I, I decided to use it as a guideline and I did it. And I did less uh, short rows here, but I think it's still okay. And I was trying to follow the number of stitches here, but because my husband is here, I can just put it on him and see, is it okay? It's not okay. Do I need to go uh, bigger, increase more or not? So that worked. But I, I don't like to knit the same pattern twice, but I feel like knitting this um, again, maybe for my grandson, my grandson um, and follow the pattern because as I was knitting, I said, oh, that's what she meant by this. So, I, and then I discussed with Katarina and that was right. That's what she meant by that. And now I understand what the pattern was asking. So I saw on Ravelry, um, I looked on Ravelry to understand, try to understand. And some people said that the pattern was very bad written. And, and I said, yeah, it was very bad. <laughs> but it's not. It's just that uh, I was thinking of um, Knit for Olive in the uh, Fruit Knitting podcast that she said that when they did their, their, they thought that all they had to do is get the pattern and translate it to English. And it was not that, that they had to add much more information. So it is that we are used to get much more information, more detailed. And, and then it's easier to understand. But this pattern was in, just in Norwegian that we use Google Translate, or in my case, I had the blessing that Katarina translated it to me in a very good English style pattern. But that's what it is. But the pattern is, is good if you understand what, what she's asking. So now I do understand, so I could do another uh, sweater with that. And I, I really like it. I like the textures and I like the fact that this uh, is a different stitch than this. And I like it mostly that I am already separating the sleeves and from here it's kind of, you know, uh, smooth sailing. So I like this. And my husband likes it too, a lot. So, so this is, I think, my last knitting. Um... So I have other projects on the needles, but I didn't work on them. So I'm not showing them here. And I feel like casting on other projects and I'll probably do that. So uh, in December, Paula was here for 20 days. It was very nice. We, we um, traveled uh, Christmas day, like we, we left the house on the 24 and came back on the 26th at night because it was cold. We went with the um, camper van, but we ended up staying at hotels because I thought it was too cold for the dogs. And uh, we had Goldie and Lucky with us. And I allowed Paula to go in the front seat and I went in the back seat with, with the dogs. And I'm so grateful I did that because I was three days sitting by Goldie's side. So, so that was pretty good. And then the first week of January, we had to put her down. And I was uh, not very well. So um, I would like to talk a little bit about this. So when Paula's father divorced me, I, I got into a very deep depression and it was very hard to get out of it. And the only reason I got out of it is because I figured out that I was the best person to take care of Paula because I put Paula as my priority, priority over my feelings and everything. And the way I was able to finally get out of my deep depression was by changing my thought. So I wanted to share here a little bit. So with Goldie, I would say it was a mild depression. And the reason being is because she was 14 years old and I was expecting that she would have to go. And she had already amputated one toe in one paw. So we did that to another puppy. And 
she passed away six months later. So I knew it was not, she would not stay forever. So, so she, we had to put her down 4th of January and, and I got depressed as, of course, because our puppies are like children that never grow. So what I wanted to share is, um, what I'm, what I have done since then to cope with my depression. So the first thing is I try not to think too much what was hard because for the past seven years, she has followed me everywhere all the time. Um, everywhere. So everywhere I go, she would be there with me. And, and that is, um, so it's hard, but I try not to think about it. Every time I thought of something like that, I would change my mind. The other thing I did is keep moving because I remembered in 2021 when I got in a deep depression, I would sleep most of the day. Um, this time, what I tried to do was keep moving. So uh, I would clean the house. Um, and I think what makes, uh, I would try to do things that I like. So I did some dyeing that I haven't done in quite a while. I dyed some yarn. And, and I look to do things that I like and I start dancing and I think dancing is, is the best therapy because I look at the internet for seventies and eighties songs. That is the time that I was a teenager and a young adult. And when you are dancing, then to those songs, it brings back to you good memories of those days. And also when you're dancing, you are, you are, you feel better because you are moving. So I don't know. Um, when I was thinking today about how I would share what I've been through or how I was coping with my depression. Now it, it's very interesting because you start thinking one negative thing and then you start thinking of other sad things and another sad thing comes in another sad moment in your life. And then suddenly you're feeling very low because all these bad memories come to you. And as I'm talking now, I'm thinking bad things. So what I wanted each person feels different and each person acts differently. What I wanted to share is how I am coping. And the way I'm coping is I'm trying to change my thoughts when I think of the sad things. I'm trying not to think of sad things in general. And I'm moving, dancing a lot. Dancing really helps. So, um, I think Mihai will put some uh, footage of the trip here that we did with Paula. I don't know if he has many or if he has any. I don't know. Um, we got a beautiful day here. It's winter and uh, and the sun, because it, it has a lot of snow this year, much more than last year. Uh, the water is like silvery and it's, it was pretty, but I just wanted to share with you, um, how I am coping and maybe that will help somebody that is going through a mild depression or a deep depression. And, and that's it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for being with me here. Uh, I wish you all a great 2024.
let's shift away from this world of madness Take a little time to enjoy the silence Feel the wind as it touches your lips Feel the sun as you close your eyelids 